Right, the first day of the week will be Sunday. Just because, um, uh, just because you see Chris, look at this. This is this is uh, the calendar. You see the first day right here is Sunday, Monday. Last day will be Saturday. This is just you got an iPhone two in your pocket. This is this is the this is the regular year. This is the regular calendar. Right, so the seventh day of the week will be Saturday. Right, but your Sabbath day starts from sundown to sundown. It goes from sundown to sundown. Right. You understand that? Give me Leviticus 23 and 32. Right? Your Sabbath is from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. That's the Sabbath day. Remember, it's required of us to remember. Right, so I'm going to show you how to keep the Sabbath day. The do's and don't do's on the Sabbath. Follow? 23. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 32. Bring it out. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Right, and so that's step number one. On a Sabbath of rest. That's a Sabbath of rest. Don't you work. Bring it right now. So, yeah. Right, so you, you're not supposed to be clocking. You're not supposed to be going to work. You know, and clocking in, whatever it is. Whatever uh, uh, labor that you're doing for hire, you're not supposed to be doing it on a Sabbath. So now, you might just, you might not be learning this, but once you actually decide to come back to the The month at even from even unto even shall you celebrate your seven. Right, so from even to even shall you celebrate your seven. Let me ask you a question. Right, before there was clocks on the earth, how you tell time? Just look at that. Right, when the sun goes up and down. Right, so according to the Bible, give me Genesis 1 and 5. According to the Bible, our forefathers, right, our forefathers in the Bible, they would tell time when the sun went down. That's right. Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 5. You know. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. All right, hold on, brother. You ever read the Bible? You ever read the first page of the Bible? You read about the creation, right? I bet you looked over there. All right, read, read on. No. And the evening and the morning was the first day. One more time. In and the, the evening and the morning was the first day. The evening and then the morning was the first day. That's right. That means your day starts. Darkness, like everything, like every single last thing else that's on this earth. You got a flower that start where? Under the earth and darkness, and it springs up to photos photosynthesize with the sun. Right, your day starts when the sun is down and it rises up and it gives you your day, and it sets to end your day. Follow that? You understand that, brother? Of course. Right, that's what that's when your day starts at sundown. You follow? So right now, as the sun just went down probably about like two hours ago, right? It's the start of the Sabbath, the Sabbath day. Step number one on the Sabbath day is you gotta rest. Right. So that is God give a commandment that we gotta rest. Go back to that in Exodus 20. Uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 8. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. You know what I'm saying? In it thou, thou shalt not, not do any work. work. Right, so we can't do work on the Sabbath. So, brother, you working right now? Sister, you working? You working? Not working? Right, so that's good. Well, on the Sabbath day, we can't do no work. We got that, ready? We got that all right. Ready? We can do my ten. We can jump into the corner. Right, that's step number one. You can't work on the Sabbath day. Right, so every Saturday, every Friday, Sunday, on the Saturday, comes sun Friday, Sunday, on the Saturday, Sunday, uh -huh. you got to pull your money out of this economy. Right. Right. You gotta pull your money out of this economy and stop spending money. All right. That's right. Right. No spending money on the Sabbath. No buying. No selling. Let's, let's get to that next. 
Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. Bring it up. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals. Where or any victuals is what you see at Christmas Village. Where and victuals is merchandise. Right. right. Where, so if the people of the land bring any where or if they bring any victuals, read. On the Sabbath day. On the what? On, on the, the Sabbath, Sabbath day. day. What's the day? On, on the, the Sabbath, Sabbath day. day. Read. To sell that we would not buy it of them. We're not going to do what? That we, we would, would not, not buy, buy it of them. them. I got to go to Christmas Village. That we, we would, would not, not buy it of them. Not a Ferris wheel. That we, we would, would not, not buy it of them. Funnel cake. We would not buy it of them. Deep fried Oreos. We would not buy it of them. Right? We cannot buy or sell on the Sabbath day whether it hurt your feelings or not. Hey! Right. Right. Hey! Right. 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 It was a Ferris wheel earlier, but now it's the funnel cake, man. Right? Jake get offended at small things, right? But I mean, they didn't see the pictures that we looked at earlier by forefathers. That's not on their mind. Marcus, what's on their mind now? Lights and funnel cake. Right. And immodest clothing and folly. Right. And Christmas trees. And damn, lights on it. Right? And, and jogging Edomite, right? That's what's on their mind. Follow fun. <laughs> Right, not the laws of the Most High God. Right, hold that. Go to Joshua one and eight. Right, not the laws of the Most High God. You understand that? Book of Joshua chapter one and verse eight. No. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Right. Everything we talked about, and somebody else might talk to you about it it's as if you never heard it before. Right. But guess what? Go to Acts 17 and 30. The most God, He remembers situations like this. You understand that? God remembers times where you actually decide to stop and have a, a, a godly discourse with your brothers. Right? right? These things get remembered. You know how sometimes you might slip up, you might do something you don't want to do, like eat a burger even though you're a vegan. I'm not a vegan, but you saying you're a vegan? That's a lifestyle. Whatever your mindset put yourself to do, you gotta do it with your full might. You follow? Mm -hmm. So if you're supposed to be a vegan, you're not supposed to be eating no burgers. Right. You follow? So whatever it is, and sometimes you might fall yourself falling short or whatever it may be, you follow? You know, you, those times it might have you feeling down. Sometimes you might be feeling down and out or whatever. I, I do uh, cabbage. Cabbage is good. Yeah, yeah. Cabbage, cabbage is great, right? Cabbage right. is good. I need, right. Hey, man, I, I gotta work on my, I gotta work on my, uh, <laughs> my diet as well. Right. Come, come, come. Come. The book of Romans chapter 14 and verse 23. Bring it out. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So when you do things, like you said, you're a vegan. So if you want to live that lifestyle, you got to do it in faith. You got to do it wholeheartedly. Because the Lord is saying when you do things and you don't do it in faith, Sin and so our whole objective is to repent and not commit sin. So working the law is keeping you from um, sinning, but also doing things in faith, keeping the faith in Yahweh Shai. Doing things in faith will keep you uh, spotless and keep you away from sin as well. That's right. If you're do that lifestyle, you got to do it wholeheartedly. And if you're not going to do it wholeheartedly, but you're saying you're doing it, you're sinning because you're being double-minded. Right. 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 God remembers situations like this when we had these conversations in Acts 17 and 30. It's the book of Acts, chapter 17 and verse 30. We go. It's like, and the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. To do what? To, to repent. repent. Right, so when you were ignorant of certain things that you may not have known before today, follow? Like the dietary law that we went over, things that you can and cannot eat. That is in the Bible. You might have known that you didn't want to do it, but you may not have known that it's actually in the Bible. You can never go back to it. Or you can never have an option and say, yeah, maybe I'll have some pork. You can't. You can never have an option and say, yeah, maybe I'll just cut it off today. No, you can't do that. You follow? So now that you're aware that these things are actually in the Bible, you got to move circuits back according to that. Because when you didn't know, when you were ignorant of those things, God went that. And you said, okay, he does know. Right? But then now you know you got to repent. Meaning you gotta confess your sins to the most 
I got the turf. Follow. Right, so that's the seventh day. How do you keep the seventh day? What can, what can you not do? Give me Leviticus 23 and verse number uh, one. It's one more I'm gonna give you that's very important, man. It's about the seven. That's what we're gonna focus on. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse number one. You know. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocation. To be what? Holy, holy convocation. convocation. Resting, but you also are commanded to, to, to congregate. Follow? 
So, if you don't mind me asking, brother, you, you got a lot of, you got, you the type of, you got a lot of friends or a few friends? Conversations that, that that conviction that you might be feeling right now you will constantly be keeping yourself in that in that temple. Right, your body is your temple. Follow. You don't want to get into a time when you're not treating your body like it's a temple. You understand that? Constantly in the temple. Right, read. And in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Yahweh Shah on Mashiach. Right, brother, I might not pull up to your house, but nonetheless, we here. Right, nonetheless, we in the temple every day. Right. right, meaning what? We constantly getting together every week. Yeah. Follow, but like Corey, we gotta get to know you more. Right, you gotta congregate. Follow. Right, I might, I might not pull up to your house, but nonetheless, we out here every week. We got that. Ecclesiastes yes. chapter four and verse nine. Yes. Yo, two are better than one. What do you want to say? Two, two are better than one. One, one more time. Two, two are better than one. one. Right. Two are better than one. Right. So, hey man, you like we spoke about earlier. You might be going through rough times of, of whatever it may be. You follow? Mm -hmm. But you got your brothers out here, and we all will have no issue at all with help lifting you up. Right. You know at saying? all. Through the Spirit. Right. According to the ability in which God gives us. You follow? Right. Whatever it may be. Right. Two is better than one. Read. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Right. Oh, read it one more time. Because they, they have, have a, a good, good reward, reward for, for their, their labor. labor. Right. Coming out here might seem strange to you. It might seem strange to other people. But they don't understand the great reward that comes with this labor that we put in. Right. Right, this is labor out here. Right? Right. Right. My toes are starting to get cold. See that? Follow. Right. My nose is starting to run. Right? Hey, hey we can see y'all here recording, right? No, not too long ago, it was a video we uploaded. Then the comment boy was talking about, ah, oh, that guy, he keeps sniffling. He keeps wiping his nose with his hand. Right? They kept saying that in the comment boy. Guess what? I don't give a damn. Right. You follow? It's, it's cold out here, man. What you expect? Right. right. Right, yeah, I'm a sniffle. Why are we Jake? Right. 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 But guess what? That's the, what I'm talking about. People, it, it may look a certain way, like we just robots, we just come out here every weekend, but no, this is labor that actually comes with a great reward for the kingdom of heaven. Follow people walk by, look at us, crazy, laugh, scoff, whatever. People come up and yell at us for no apparent reason, throw water, throw water on us, right. all kinds right. of stuff, throw right. stuff at us. Might have to, people get, you know, whatever. But it's all for a great reward. Follow? That's right. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Wait, what do you say? For if, if they, they fall, fall, the one, one will lift, lift up his fellow. For woe to him that is alone. Mm. When he falleth, for he has none, another to help him up. Right, so, you know, your friends, you know, make sure they keep the commandments of God. Your true friends. Right, your true friends, whoever it may be. All right, I'm going to trust that you got good spiritual discernment. Make sure they keep the commandments of God. Right. When you fall, if that's who you going to pull you up, brother. Follow. It's a lifestyle that we are here teaching. It's not just a Sunday church type of thing. It's a lifestyle type of thing. So literally, you have substance in which you can live by by the moment you take two steps up the way. Literally. You know it's substance and things that you actually learn. Substance of things that you can actually do to better yourself. Follow? Read on. I went to cold. In the cold, read. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. What did the Lord say? If, if two, two lie, lie together, together then, then they, they have, have heat. heat. Right, so if two lie together, we don't have heat. Right? That's why I talk about two little hand ones. Right. We got heat when we up here together. Right? We, 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 we feed off of each other's spirit. We come out here and we talk to Jake. We might share a couple laughs. Sometimes we come out here and serious. Right? Every camp, you know, every time that we come out here and teach, it's not as is how it is right now. It gets serious out here. Right. At the end of the day, it's not sweet out here. It's not safe out here. Follow? It gets serious, and sometimes we want to be able to have a, a, you know, a couple laughs and whatnot. But 
when two lie together, that's when we say that heat. Give me Jeremiah 5 and 14. Give me Jeremiah 5 and 14. Give me Jeremiah 5 and 14. Right. Two line together, they go ahead. What's the heat? What we talking about? The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, and verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word. Because ye what? Because ye speak this word. What's the scripture? Because ye speak this word. What's the Bible? Because ye speak this word. What's the banner? Because ye speak this word. Behold, I will make my words and thy mouth fire. And make the what? I will make my words and thy mouth fire. Right, so these words that's coming out the Bible is fire. It's fire. It's fire. It gives you heat. It gives you comfort, like I was telling sister earlier. You understand that? It gives you peace, like like what like, like we read about. Right? These words is fire. It, it could be zero degrees out here. Through the spirit of the Most High God, we might still be out here. Yeah. You follow that? These words is fire. Read. And this people would. What the Lord say? And, and this people would. would. Right? And these people. And this sometimes people are gonna be wood. People are gonna be wood when it comes down to the word look. It's like we first started off with how the Lord is an austere man and you don't play no games. And guess what? You know, there's certain prophecies in the Bible about certain whole races of people right. that's not going to last too long. Right? That's right. right. There's certain prophecies in the Bible about certain living conditions that we live in right now that's not going to last too long. That's right. You follow? It's certain, it's certain things that's going to make a, a swift change very soon. Right, so let's go back to Ecclesiastes. Now, continuing on to verse 10. So like verse 11, but how can one be warm alone? Uh, how can one be warm alone? Right. So unless you know, unless your other friends got D's on the edge of their clothes, these friends right here, right, which is in the law, like, you know, in the laws that we were reading earlier, I didn't read this specific law, but unless your other friends got these fringes on, I don't know how you're going to warm yourself up by yourself, brother. Follow. It's okay to be taught. It's okay to have righteous conversations to be built up. Follow. Read on. Verse 12, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. What's well, somebody come up to you and say, hey, last time I checked, you was an African-American. What you going to say? You can't laugh, brother. You got to respond to that. Don't laugh. <laughs> That's right. Right. <laughs> right. I think you're an African-American. You're telling me you're Israelite? No, you're really an African-American. They mean a lot. I understand that. I probably say the same thing. But you want to have that spiritual fortitude to be able to combat whatever it is. Right. Now, while you're in a while you're in a state where you may not have the capabilities to do so, you got brothers to call. You know what I'm saying? If come down to that, spiritual demon saying he'll talk to you in your own mind, some kind of way. Read that one more time. And if one prevail against him, if what? And if, if one, one prevail, prevail against, against him, him, you can have a spirit prevailing against you in your mind. Two shall withstand him. What did the Lord say? Two, two shall withstand him. Not just yourself. Follow that. Read on. It's like it. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Right, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Right? Like if you, like if anybody knows anything about bushcraft, if anybody knows anything about hunt, uh, about hunting, or hiking, or, or whatever it may be, by surviving in wilderness and outdoor nature, you no know, paracord is something that you might really need. Right. right, you put your essentials. paracord on essentials, right? That's your essentials, right? That's your survival kit essentials. Put your paracord on your book bag, on your lighter, whatever it may be. Right, a threefold cord is not e easily broken. You understand that? But you gotta make shelter in wilderness when there's not a lot of uh, 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 fruit, when there's not a lot of uh, you know fresh water, lemon water, and you gotta make your own shelter when you alone. And guess what? A threefold cord is not easily broken. Meaning, well, when you have brothers around you. And a, and, a, and a help to make a shelter for you for you to actually do things that you know you're supposed to be doing, things that you want to do. Because when you're by yourself, it's going to be harder. Spiritual demons is going to actually attack you. Follow that? Right, give me Psalm 146 and 10. Give me Sirach 43 and 30. Right, I'm going to pass it this next brother. going to come up and teach, right? Give me Psalm 146 and 10 first. Yes, sir. Book of Psalms, up. chapter 146, and verse number 10. No, no, no. if you have any questions, the brother's going to ask them for you, right? The Lord shall reign forever. What the Lord say? The Lord shall reign forever. Read. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. No, to sometimes. 
When ye glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as ye can. Only sometimes. Exalt, exalt him as much as ye can. Only in the spread on the Sabbath. Exalt him as much as ye can. Only on the feast day. Exalt him as much as ye can. For even yet will he far exceed. We might not get the kingdom. For even yet will he far exceed. My great grandkids going to be in Babylon. For even yet will he far exceed. The most high God is going to far exceed. You know what I'm saying? Giving us the kingdom, giving us the spiritual benefits that we kind of requiring in this thing, right? Giving us the fruits that we really laboring for in this thing, right? Brothers don't, you know, make our bodies a living sacrifice and give alms just to get nothing in return, right? right? When you give alms, you coming out here to camp, you should low-key respect, uh, uh, respect the response. You should low-key respect something in return. So that way you do, you do continue to grow. You have no option but to grow in this truth. Right. All the times you come out here in this cold, all the times you, 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 you damn crying during the week, during the week, fighting spiritual demons, Satan, that's not for no reason, man. Right. Right, there's benefits that come from these things, so therefore take advantage of it. Read. And when ye exalt him, put forth all your strength. No, I don't feel like it. Put, put forth, forth all your strength. strength. It's my pinky. Put, put forth, forth all, all your strength. strength. Read. And be not weary. It's too cold. And, and be, be not, not weary. weary. Read. For ye can never go far enough. Or you can never go so far enough exceedingly praising the most high God, Yahweh, by some much Yahweh. Right. Come here, so. 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 Right? So the brother brought it down mighty. He brought it down right. mighty through the spirit, man. So just to pick up, recap, what's our nationality? What's our race? What did the Lord call us? We are Romans 11 and 1. Let's start there. Right? Because everything that he taught you, everything that he told you, you got you to gotta put that in your mind. You got to hold on to it. Right? Because like the brothers breaking down, this is important for us. Right? To know who we are, who our God is, and what's required of us. Right? Bring that up. Romans chapter 11 of verse 1. Now, we about to, this is about to proclaim what our nationality is according to the Most High God. All right, go ahead. I say then, has God cast away his people? The Most High has a chosen people. Did he do away with his chosen people? Go ahead. God forbid. I mean, no, he didn't do away with his chosen people. Go ahead. For I also am an Israelite. For what? For I also am an Israelite. One more time. For I also am an Israelite. That I also am a what? Israelite. Right. Right? Now the brother broke it down. Right? Israelite. Right? I'm gonna recap it one more time for you. Israel, right? Israel. And then when you put I at the end of a name, that just means a descendant of. Right. So when you say Israelite, that means you're a child of Israel. You understand that? So our nationality, according to the most high, is Israelites. As Israelites, what does the Lord want us to do? Right? As Israelites, the Lord requires something of us. Give me up here, Ronnie, uh, 10 and 12. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. Right? Right For the commandment is a lamp. For what? For, For the, the commandment, commandment is a lamp. Now, the brother brought out earlier that we broke in the noonday. As the blind groping in darkness, uh, going back to Deuteronomy 28, groping in noonday. So, what's going to give us that light? What's going to shine so that we can see? The example the brother used was this night. It's uh, nighttime. The lights is out. You got your charge, and you trying to reach for the outlet. So you groping around. What's the light? What's the light that's going to help you find your way through the society? Right? Because Christianity, that's us groping in noonday. Islam is us groping in noonday. Right? All of these different philosophies is us groping in noonday. Bring that out again. For the commandment is a lamp. For what? For, For the, the commandment, commandment is a lamp. lamp. The commandment. That's the lamp. That's the light that you need. Right? Go ahead. And the law is light. And what? And the, the law is light. light. So keeping the laws and the commandments, that's what's going to help you. That's what's going to guide you. Right. Keeping the commandments and getting that understanding of, of, of what the 
the law requires of us. That's what's going to uphold us in these last days. That's what's going to keep you from just groping around. That's going to have you to take that outlet and just plug it right in and know that you got the power. Right. See what I'm saying? And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. And what? And reproofs of instruction, instruction are the, the way, way of life. life. Reproof of instruction is a way of life. Right. Right now, brother, how power do you? If you don't mind me asking. 33. So you got 33 years of living a certain lifestyle in America. Right. But when you come back to this Bible as an Israelite, that's a whole lifestyle change. Right. Right. And a lot of what I'm going to bring out is going to reiterate what the right. brother already brought out. So we have to change our whole lifestyle from what we were used to. 33 years of it. You got to take that, take that, do away with that, and now relearn everything straight up the scriptures. Right. It's a spiritual, a biblical, a, a spiritual reset. Right, give me um, give me Ephesians chapter four and start at verse twenty-two. Ephesians four and twenty-two. Deuteronomy. Come on, you can drop that. Matter of fact, you can bring that up. Bring it up. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter ten, verse twelve. Yeah. And now, Israel, what right. does the Lord think? Like? Who's Israel? Who's the Israelites? Right. That's right, brother. You got to know that. Next time I ask you, you got to say that with some confidence. That's right. When they say you got to say it with your chest. You got to say it with your chest. All right, read that again from the top. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? Right now, what does the Lord require of us? Go ahead. No, what does he require of us? What does he want us to do? What's the light? What's the light that we just read? That. Bring this out, King. We got you, brother. We got you. But to fear the Lord thy God, right? To walk in all his ways, right? To love him, right? To serve him, the Lord thy God, with all thy heart and all thy soul. You gotta fear, you gotta love the most high, and you gotta serve him, you gotta walk in all the ways that he set out for us. Go ahead. To keep the commandments to of the what? Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. As what? what? What did the Lord call us? That's the last. That's the last bit of the word. Right. As Israelites. Right. Uh, Israelites. Right. Israelites have to keep the commandments. You're an Israelite, right. and the Lord requires us to keep the commandments. Right. All right, keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, right? Which I command thee this day for what? For thy good. No, to kill you. For, for thy, thy good. good. No, to murder you. For, for thy, thy good. good. Keeping the commandments is for your good. Right. When we didn't keep the commandments, all of these things happen to us, right? All, every time all of this stuff is happening to us, it continues to happen to us because we don't keep the commandments. We literally get murdered in the streets because the Lord's not protecting us because we're not keeping the commandments. That's right. right? The Lord is not coming back to save black people. He's going to save Israelites from the tribe of Jews. That's right. You know what I'm saying? He's not coming back to save Haitians. He's going to save Israelites from the tribe of Levi. Right? And you proclaim that you were an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. So, as an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, you got to keep what? You gotta keep the commandments. Right. That's right. right. I'm gonna tell you this right now. Every time I ask you a question, it's either going to, the answer is going to be Israelites or the commandments. Right. <laughs> that, those are two answers. It's going to be Israelites or the commandments. Right. All right. It's true or false? <laughs> so, what are we? <laughs> Israelites or commandments? Yeah. Israelites. That's right. Israelites. That's right. All right. All right. And we got to do what? That's right, that's right. right. All right. He got that, he got that, he got that. The commandments, yeah, keep the law, keep the commandments. All right, all praise. Right, I'll right. bring up some priests up. Now you cut the flock, you just go into the um, kind of renew in your mind when you come to this. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3. Bring it up. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children. Say what? 
and then you be converted and you become as little children. So you have to be converted and you have to be like a child. Meaning, you have to take your, a child doesn't really, when you're teaching a child something, they don't really buck up against it, right? They don't act like they know it all. Any, any good child, any child that got any type of real home training, they're not gonna buck up when you're trying to show them something and teach them something. Right. Children like to soak up knowledge. You see what I'm saying? So like coming in, say what? Like a sponge. Like a sponge. That's right. So coming into this truth, this, this Bible is the living water. Your mind is like a sponge. And guess what? You got 33 years of a dry sponge. So where did that, where that sponge need to go? Right. Into the water. You got to right. soak this up. Right, bring it up. Right. You got to soak this up, right? So be like a child, go ahead. Except ye be converted, right? And become as little children, right? Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You shall what? You shall, shall not, not enter into, into the, the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. heaven. So people that are prideful, people that, that think that they know it all, those people are not going to make it to the kingdom. Right, the Lord said he resists the proud, uh -huh. right? But he gonna give grace to the humble. Right. So you gotta be like a child, go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, right? The same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The same as what? The, the same, same is the greatest in the, in the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. heaven. Right, so you gotta humble yourself as a child. And you gotta take everything that we giving you, and you gotta take it to heart. You gotta hold it in your mind. And you gotta open up your Bible, right? Lord willing, you, get, you, you have a Bible at home? Yeah. All right. That's right, you said your grandmother read. Your grandmother was reading. So you gotta pop that pop that thing open. Right. Pop that, yeah. pop that, uh, <laughs> that Bible open <laughs> and start reading that joint. That's right. So like, right, pause. So you gotta read your Bible. And you gotta soak up all of the knowledge that comes that, that you read. Right? Um what else I call uh, Ephesians 4. Hey. Ephesians 4 and uh, 22. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 22, you know, that you put off concerning the former conversation, right? the old man. The old man, right? So like I keep saying, you got that 33 years of learning different things and learning different ways of Babylon, you got you to gotta convert your mind, right? Putting off that old man, which is corrupt. Which is what? Which, which is, is corrupt, corrupt. right? Because Corey living in America is corrupt. Corey thought he was a, he was a black man, right? right? But now... You gotta get you a Hebrew name, right. right? You gotta get you a Hebrew name, and then you gotta understand you're an Israelite. You can't let nobody just call you black or African American just all, all at any given moment, right? right? However they want to talk to you or whatever they want to label you as. No, you gotta stand up and, and know that you're an Israelite and proclaim that, and don't let nobody push you off your square, right? As an Israelite, keep on, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, right? According to the deceitful. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be what? And, and be, be renewed, renewed in, in the, the spirit, spirit of your mind. mind. Right, and so this is that time of you being renewed. Right, this is literally that time of you being reborn. Right, you're becoming as a child, getting the understanding, and now it's that time for you to grow and get, this, uh, and get a deeper understanding. It's more not God. And that you put on the new man. And that you do what? And, and that, that you put, put on, on the, the new man. man. You gotta put on a new core. Right. You gotta put on, you gotta take the old off, take that black and throw it in the harbor and put a new quarry on. That's right. On that Israelite. Right. Right? Go ahead. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Right. And righteousness and true holiness. Right? And he told you that the word holy means set apart. Right. Right? Bring this up. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Right? Right. Speak unto the children of Israel. Who's Israel? Huh? Who, who, who are the Israelites? Israelites are the children of Israel. Who are they? In the spirit. Who are they today? Who are they right now today? Who are they some Israelites? Right. Are they behind you or in front of you? You see that? Well, they behind you now. <laughs> right? We the Israelites, brother. Right. Look, look, look. We the Israelites. So called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Bring it up, bring it up. Alright? We the Israelites. Who the Israelites? We are the Israelites. That's right. Is, is that an Israelite? Uh, mm. 
He said no. He not, that's not an Israelite. Yeah, he know he's not an Israelite. We the Israelites, brother. Hey. Hey. All right. Come, uh, bring up numbers. Numbers 15. Numbers chapter 15 to verse 38. Right. Hey, speak okay. unto the children of Israel. Right. Speak to us. Go ahead and bid them. Right. That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Right. Throughout their generation. Now, we have to wear fringes in the borders of our garments. This is a commandment that uh, the brother was uh, kind of dipped into, but he really go into it. Right, right. So we have to wear fringes. That's a commandment for us. Now, see all of the brothers got fringes on, right? Right, okay, okay. Oh, all of the brothers got fringes. Come. That's right. All right. Fringes come in different, uh, different colors, right. different sizes. Now he said until you, uh, throughout your generations, meaning forever, because we still, as a people, we're still generating on the earth. Right. Go ahead. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Right. Now brothers got different color fringes, different styles of fringes, but everybody has a blue border on their fringe. Blue was a royal color. So in the ancient world, everybody couldn't get blue. The Lord commanded us to wear that ribbon of blue on our fringes. But now he's about to tell you why we wear the fringes. Why do you think we wear the fringes? To keep what? It's one of two answers. Okay. It's, it's Israelites or commandments? The Israelites got to do what? Keep the... And it shall come to it's like, and it shall be unto you for a friend, that you may look upon it, that you may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And what? And, and remember, remember all the commandments, the commandments of the Lord. Lord. And what? And remember and all, all the commandments, commandments of the Lord. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. And what? And do them. And what? And, and do them. God, just think about it. And, and do. do them. God, just read it. And, and do. Them. Them. And do them. We gotta read the commandments of the Lord. Do them. So these fringes is a commandment for us to remember the commandments. As what the Lord calls it. Israelites. Uh, all, right. Uh, all right, brother. As Israelites, we gotta keep the commandments. Uh, all right, brother. brother. One or two answers. Right. Give me one or two answers every time. Right? Keep going. Right. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a horn. Mm. After which ye used to go a horn. So the time that we lived, because brothers didn't, we didn't grow up with this understanding of the scriptures. Right. right. Like this, brothers had to become like children. Like, like we're teaching you to do. We had to do that ourselves. Right. We had to go through that phase of relearning everything. Because I found this out around your age as well. Finding out, finding out I'm an Israelite and all of that Christianity that I got plugged into my mind, I had to erase all of that and then refill it with the proper understanding of the scriptures. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I used to think Jesus died on the cross for everybody. Right. But the Bible don't say that. Right. I used to think that Jesus Christ was a so-called white man. But the Bible don't say that. Right. Oh. right? Because this world is set up to keep you from knowing who you are, who your God is, what's required of you, and how to actually have some type of power in this life. Right? right? Give me um, give me Genesis 32 and 28 right quick. Hold that because I'm going to go back to that. Genesis 32 and 28. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 32. Huh. And verse 28. Right. This is something we brought out earlier. The brother brought out earlier. Go ahead. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Your name is not going to be called Jacob, but what? But Israel. But what? But, but Israel. Israel. But Israel. Jacob's name got changed to Israel. Go ahead. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. Israel. Hebrew is Yasser Allah. That's Yah right. is He, Shah is Prince, and Allah is God. So the word God and um, the word power are synonymous. You understand that, brother? God and power, they are interchangeable. So when you say we're Israelites, we're saying we're princes of God. We're princes of power. You understand that? The Most High God is the King. Right. What's the son of a king? A prince. 
we're princes of God. So as princes of God, we're required to move as royalty among the earth. That's right. We're not required to be uh, moving around as niggas or living as niggas, trying to uh, smoke up everything and damn, drink all the damn time or fight out your women or be fighting your brother and killing your brother all the time. That's not what, that's not what the Lord called us to be, right? So these commandments help us to remain in good graces with the Most High, right? Bring uh, numbers back up. We finish that up. I want to finish that chapter off. Numbers chapter fifteen and verse forty. You know that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God and be holy unto your God. Go ahead. I am the Lord your God, the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord brought us out of slavery when we were slaves in ancient Egypt. He brought us out of Egypt to be what? To be your God. Go ahead. I am the Lord. You're your God. God. So these fringes are very important for us to have because it is that physical reminder to for us to keep the commandments. Straight. Do the commandments. You understand that? I feel like I said a lot just now. You caught that? All right. Why we wear the fringes? To keep what? Save your beard? No. Right. What if you wanted to? What if it was for your job? Nope. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll put it. Right, bring it up. Leviticus 19 and verse 28. Look it up. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Now, you can't cut yourself. All right? You can cut yourself. All right. Most of our people don't do that. But there's people that have different lifestyles because we're in America and our mind has been poisoned from the youth up. But the Lord said, you can't cut yourself, go ahead, for the dead. Nor print any marks upon you. Nor what? Nor print any marks upon you. Now, what is that going into? Printing marks upon you. On your body. Right, on your body. What is that? X's on your body. Okay, okay. But what do they call it nowadays? Tattoos. Tattoos. Do you have any tattoos? All praises to the most high. Right? See, like the brother said, man, you keeping a lot of commandments and don't even know it. Right. Keep it mad right. you keeping a lot of commandments and don't even know it. Right? right? So now really it's a, it's about fine tuning. It's about fine tuning. You said what? Well, if that's gonna come back to you, that means you gotta come back to us, man. You gotta come back to the Lord, man. You gotta come back to the Lord and you gotta serve him wholeheartedly. Right. You gotta serve more heartily because you can't say that you're gonna do it and then do something else. Right? You can't say you're gonna do it and then do something else. Um come on, bring that up. Bring up the precept. James chapter 1 of verse 22. Come. But be ye doers of the word. But what? But be ye doers of the word. Go ahead. And not hearers only. And not hearers only. You gotta be a doer of the law and not hearers only. Right? Go ahead. Deceiving your own self. Doing what? Deceiving, deceiving your, your own self. self. See, you're deceiving yourself. When you say you're going to uh, return to the Lord and you're saying that the Spirit is coming back to you and this knowledge is coming back to you, if you have that understanding and then you still decide to go back off into the world, hey, you're deceiving yourself. And the Lord is not mocked. The Lord will get up with anybody at any given time. Right. right. And the Lord will 
Lord ain't no, he ain't no nice guy. Right. He brought out how uh, the Lord is an austere man. Austere means serious. He don't play around. And it's not this guy at all. Right. It's not him at all. He's not austere. He's not serious. At all. He's soft. He like, if you smack him, he might fold. Right. For real. Fold like a, uh, like a damn lawn chair. Right? He's more than uh, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer. So if you hear the words of the, of, the, of the law and you hear the scriptures being brought out and you don't do them or you don't apply them to your life, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in right. a glance. Right. And you don't want to behold that old man court. You want to behold the new man of yourself. You want to put on a new self and that new self is deeply rooted and based off of the scriptures, right, off yeah. of the words of your God, right? Your God, your power, right? As a... As an Israelite, that's, that's right. right, that's right. <laughs> See that? Bring out your precept, uh, Nassai. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse one. Oh, yeah. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O oh, house of Israel. Right, go ahead. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, right? And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Right. Now, the Lord is talking about something that people do, and it's something that our people are being warned about right now. We're being warned about this in the ancient world, but it's something that's still happening today. Right. You see that over there? What's, what's that over there? Now, let's listen to this. Go ahead. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Now, the Lord said, don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven because the heathen are dismayed at them. The heathen are people that are not Israelites. Right. The other nations. All right? Right. These are the people that are not your brothers. Right? They get dismayed at the signs of heaven. Go ahead. Right. For the customs of the people are vain. For the custom. This is a custom of the heathen that we're not supposed to be observing or, or that we're not supposed to be getting down with. Go ahead. For one cut of a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the ax. Right, so somebody takes an ax, they go out into the forest and they cut down a tree. It's starting to sound familiar already, ain't it? Keep going. They deck it with silver and with gold. They do what? They, they deck, deck it. it. With silver and with gold. What, what colors is on that tree? Literally. Literally, silver and gold. They deck it with silver and with gold. Right. Go ahead. They fasten it with nails and with hammer that it, it moves not. That it what? That, that it, it moves move not. They stand it up and they fasten it down that it don't move. Right. It, that We've been coming out here. That tree's been out there for how long? Yes. We did, but... This, 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 this been, it's been a couple weeks. A couple weeks, couple weeks and that, that tree has not moved. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moves not. Go ahead. They are upright as a palm tree. It's upright like a palm tree. But speak not. And that thing ain't saying nothing to you. Right. Go ahead. They must, they must need be born. Right, meaning somebody has to move that tree. That tree not going to move on its own. That tree not gonna uh, sprout up legs like you remember that that old uh, Disney uh, movie Fantasia. All right, well, good. Anyway, <laughs> that, that thing ain't gonna sprout up legs and just start running around. That's right. the point I'm getting at. Right? Go ahead. It needs to be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them. The Lord said, "What? Be, be not, not afraid, afraid of them. Be what? Be, be not, not afraid, afraid of them." Because in the ancient world, people thought that that tree had a spirit. In they thought that tree was some type of God. That's why people bring gifts to the Christmas tree because not knowing it in their subconscious, you're literally bowing down to a tree. That's right. You're literally bowing down to a tree. And the Lord told you, you don't bow down to any graven image. And that's a graven image. You're not supposed to bow down to it. And people say, oh, we're doing it for the kids. Well, guess what you're doing? You're having your kids bow down and worship some other God. That's not supposed to be worshipped by people. Right. right, hold that. Give me um 
Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 60, I think it's 66 or 64. Sixty four, Deuteronomy twenty eight, sixty four. Deuteronomy twenty eight and verse sixty four. Sixty four, sixty four. And the Lord shall scatter thee among our people, right, from one end of the earth, even unto the other, right. So the Lord scattered us all over the earth. Go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods. Now, when we got brought over to America. We were brought over here with a certain type of knowledge and understanding, with a certain culture, with a certain heritage, and that whole heritage got beat out of us, right? So the Lord said that now that we're here, we got our heritage beat out of us. Now we're going to have another God presented before us. Go ahead. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. A God that, that we don't know nor have our forefathers ever knew. Go ahead. Even wood and stone. Even what? Even, Even wood, wood and, and stone. stone. Right? And what's the Christmas tree made out of? Wood. It's a tr it's a tree. And our people bow down before a tree. We bring gifts before a tree. And the Lord telling you in Jeremiah not to do that. Because that's the way of the heathen. That's right. And doing that, us, our people celebrating Christmas. That's why I'm glad that you said that you don't celebrate Christmas. But doing that, that's going to get you put to death. Because you're putting another God before our God. Right. Right, bring up your precept, and then we're gonna go back to Jeremiah. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 19. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake, woe. Read that again from the top. Woe unto him. That him. That says, when you read woe in the Bible, woe means destruction. That's right. Oh. Death and destruction. The Lord says, That's right. Woe unto him that what? That says to the wood, that wood says to awake. the wood, Awake, go ahead, to the dumb stone, Arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over. Gold and silver. It is what? It, it is laid, laid over, over with gold, gold and, and silver. Go ahead. And there is no breath at all in the midst of it. And there's no breath in these trees. So our people don't need to be uh, following that. Go ahead. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Right. And the most high God, he sits up in the third heaven. Right. He's in the holy temple. And at any given moment when the Lord uh, cracked the sky open and, and you see the son of the most high coming down. You're going to be kept in silence before him, right? And you're going to understand all of the, uh, the, the wrong that you've done or all of the sins that you've committed. It's not going to be worth it in that day. Go ahead. This Bell and the Dragon, verse 3. Now the Babylonians had an idol called Bell, and there were spent unto him, uh, upon him every day 12 great measures of fine flour and 40 sheep and six vessels of wine. Right, bring it, so, so like it, read it from the top. Now the Babylonians had an idol called Bel, and there was spent upon him every day twelve great measures of fine flour. Right, so they had this idol, right? These heathens, uh, the Babylonians, had this idol, and they would uh, uh, bring all of this food to this idol. It's a statue. Go ahead. And forty sheep, and six vessels of wine, and the king worshipped it. Right, and the king was worshiping this god, this false god, this uh, idol or the statue that was set up. Go ahead. And went daily to adore it. But Daniel worshiped his own god. But what? But Daniel, Daniel worshiped, worshiped his, his own god. god. But the Israelites do what? But Daniel, Daniel worshiped his own god. god. We worship our god, right? We don't worship no trees or no stones or no statues or any of these other uh, images. Go ahead. And the king said unto him, Why dost not thou worship Bel? Who answered and said, because I may not worship idols made with hands. You said what? I may not, not worship idols, idols made, made with hands. hands. The Lord said that we're not even supposed to be uh, getting down with these false gods and these false idols. That's right? Right. right. These are things that are made with hands. They told you in Jeremiah 10, they chopped that tree down right. and they stand it up. That's an idol made with hands. Right. Go ahead. I may not worship idols made with hands, but the living God. But what? But, but the, the living God. God. But the living God, right? What's the most high's name? It's pronounced Yahweh. Yeah, Yahweh. Right. That's right. Right. And what's his son's name? Right. You got the Yahawa. Yahawa Shai. Yahweh Shai. 
That's the son's name. Who That's the right. Of Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shai. Right. The Most High's name is Yahweh. 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 Yahweh Shai. Right. All right. All right. Khan. So what's the most highest name? Yahweh. Khan. 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 That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and what's the chosen people? Still one of them two answers. <laughs> what are we? One of the two. One of the two. The answer is either it's either commandments or Israelites. Israelites. The Israelites. All right. And as Israelites, we gotta keep the commandments. Alright, alright, alright. Now, can we keep Christmas? Uh -huh. it's, because it's against what? It's against the commandments. Uh -huh. us, keeping, us, if our people keep it Christmas, we're going against the commandments. Right. That's, a that, that's a sin. Right? right? Mm -hmm. That's a sin according to the, uh, the Most High. So, we can't do that. Right? Um, finish that on uh, Jeremiah 10. Continuing on. For they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Right. So these trees don't do anything good for us. So all praise to the most high you don't celebrate Christmas. Right. We ain't had to get that deep into it. But at the end of the day, our people need that type of edification. Right. That's right. We need to know why we don't do it. That's right. right. Knowing that we don't do it or knowing you don't do it, that's a beautiful thing. But having an understanding, a deeper understanding on why we don't do it, that's even more beautiful. Right? Now, who, who's this? All right, bring, bring it up. Oh. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. You know. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Right. So, like, so the Lord told us to get wisdom and get understanding and don't forget it. Right? Because a lot of the stuff that we go over, you know, you want to hold on to it. Right? You want to get that understanding. You want to hold on to it. You don't want to forget it. Verse 7. Verse 7. Go ahead. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Right? Therefore, get, uh, get wisdom. Uh, and with all thy getting, get understanding. That's right. So That's you gotta right. understand. Yeah, you you might not eat uh eat meat, but you gotta have an understanding even within yourself on why you don't do it. So that way it'll build your faith up on on the reason that you're doing it, so you don't fall short and then start doing things that are not in faith, which is sin at the end of the day. That's what we brought out in uh Romans uh 14 and 23. Right? So as as what did the Lord call us? As Israelites, we got to do what? That's right. That's right, brother. All right. Um, now, who's that? Who is it? Who is it, Who is this guy? Who is it? Or this guy. Let's talk about it. You know who that is? Is this is this Jesus Christ? That's not Jesus Christ? Okay. All right. All right. What does Jesus Christ look like? But, and, uh, um, his hair was like a wool. 
man. Let's read it out the scriptures. Give me uh, Revelation. Revelation 1 and 14. Revelation 1 and 14. And um, Daniel 10 and 5. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So his hair was white. His hair was white, but it was woolly. Right? That's our hair. That's your hair. Right? That woolly hair. You got hair like the Lord got. Go ahead. As white as snow. But his was all white because he had that wisdom. That's right. Right? Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. He had flame of fire. He had a fierce countenance. We read that he was austere, right? And we understand that austere means serious. So he had that fierce countenance. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine bread. Now, your feet gonna be the same color as the rest of your body, right? That's right. His feet was like in color of fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. So you're right. That's not the Lord at all. Because our Lord, he got hair that's woolly and it's white but he got skin like brass brass is brown but with shade of brown let's see it is dark let's see how dark what is compared to go ahead and his feet like a fine brass feet like a fine brass as if they burn in a furnace as if what as if they burn in a furnace you take brass and burn it in a furnace what colors are going to turn real dark so that means that if the Lord was walking around, they would think that he was a so-called black man. That's right. They would call him an African-American. The KKK probably call him a nigga. That's right. right. And that's the Lord of the whole earth. Right. That's the that's the, the, the son of the most high. The only begotten. You see what I'm saying? But they've destroyed our people so much that we can't even fathom it. And our people, a lot of our people believe that. A lot of our people believe that. But if you know that's a lie, you would step on that image. That's right. You got all permission and authority to step on that. Step on it, King. Start out. out. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I want to knee lift. I want to knee lift and get, him out. get in there, get up, get in there. Oh. and, and stop him out. Boots right. on that. Yeah. Beats. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. All right. All right, brother. So we understand that now. That is a man in history named Caesar Borgia. Right? Caesar Borgia. He was a damn. Right? Homosexual right. into all sorts of wickedness and folly and madness. Right. And these so-called white people are so wicked that they made, they took and made him, you know, the image of the Lord. You get what I'm saying? You get in first magazine? First magazine 348. Come. Huh. First Maccabee chapter 3 and verse 48. We know and laid open the book of the law. They took our scriptures, they laid open the book of the law, go ahead. Wherein the heathen. Wherein who? Wherein the, the heathen. The heathen. The heathen is, like I said, people that are not Israelites. Right. We the Israelites, right? The people that are not Israelites, those are the heathen. The heathen took our law, go ahead. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. They did what? To sort the paint the likeness, likeness of, of their, their images. images. So they painted the Lord white. They even made God white. They even took our people, the Jews, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> Jew, Jew is took for two up. And now all of a sudden the Jews are white. Right. But Jesus Christ is an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right. And we just read that he's dark skinned right. with woolly hair. Right. So if he's dark skinned with woolly hair, where did all of the black Jews go? And why is all of the Jews white all of a sudden? What happened? Right? She looked confused. Right. She don't have an answer. Right. With the answer in the Bible. Right. Right? She confused because she got a Christmas hat on. Right? right. And, and she's a heathen. Right. right. So at the end of the day, Caesar Borgia was set up as an image. He was a homosexual. He, he was uh, with Dan Wilson, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, or was it Michelangelo? See? Michelangelo. Michelangelo. You know, you heard of the, uh, the, the artist or the painter, Mike Michelangelo? Well, that was during the Renaissance period. Uh -huh. Michelangelo was a famous, so-called a famous painter. And he painted what they called a Sistine Chapel in one of them uh, heathen churches. And he made Jesus white. But in all actuality, him and Caesar Borgia, that man, were actual, like, lovers. Like, were in a whole freaky, nasty relationship. That's right. Damn sodomites. Right? And so those people are so wicked, like I said before, they're so wicked that they would make that man the image of the Lord. They could have picked them than any other white guy, but they chose him. Right. 
the, the lowest and the dirtiest of them. Right. right? Now, so who are those people? Mm. Who are these? Who is these people? Let them know, Corey. Wake him up, huh? Hey, wait a... Let them know, Corey. We call them the small hats sometimes. Right. The small hats. Or the, the ones that wear the, the dumb the dumb top hats. With them little stupid little curls. Right. And always wearing a black suit. Extensions. Right, with the extensions. Right, you see them in New York. <laughs> and the, the hat's so small that they put a damn bobby pin on it to right. keep it in their head. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it fly off sometimes. Right. Them Jewish people up at the top of Park Heights, you know, you know that area, Pikesville, Pikesville area. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Them Jewish people. Jewish. Jewish. Ish. Ish. Mm. Give me Jeremiah 14 and two. Jewish people. And then give me um Revelation uh, two and nine. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse two. Bring it yeah. up. Judah mourning. Now the Bible's telling you about the Jews right here. The Lord said that Judah mourning, right? Hold that. Bring up our, our Revelation 2 and 9. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Yo, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Right. Now, the Lord said that Judah is in mourning. Mourning is crying. Aren't we a people that are, that, that are in mourning? Our people are in a, a, a bad state, right? Right. Our people are in a bad state because the Lord is punishing us for not keeping the commandments. So the Bible says that the Jews are in mourning. And he's telling you that the, the Jews are going through tribulations and poverty. Right? Go ahead. But thou are rich. Right? But we're rich in spirit. Hold that. Go back to this. Judah mourners. And the gates thereof languish. Right? They are blood. They are what? They, they are, are black. black. The Jews are what? They, they are, are black. black. The Bible said the Jews is black. Right. So who is that? Up, huh? See that? They lied to us. They lied to us. Wow. You heard of identity theft, right? You know that we're the victims of the biggest identity theft on the planet? Biggest one. Because we're the real Jews of the Bible. We're the real Israelites of the Bible, but they stole it. Right. Along with that, they stole our land, which is the land of Israel. That's our homeland. The Hebrew tongue. They speak a Yiddish Hebrew, but the real Hebrew that the brother was drawn on, this Hebrew, this is our language. Right. They stole that. The Bible, the Old Testament, the Torah, this is our book, this is our heritage. They stole that too. Teach up. And then what they, and what they do with us? They put us on slave ships, brought us over here, and just let us be niggas. Right. 